Hello, nerds. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Week in Nerddom comic books edition for the week of August 27th, 2018. This week in comic books is kind of a meta week, just in general. Uh, three of the five bits that we have to talk about are not directly comics, but meta in the comics realm of things. Uh, so let's just hit the intro real quick. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. And I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commando of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. All right, our first bit of meta news has to do with a, uh, what I'll be doing in two weeks, uh, roughly in a week, I guess, as you're watching this. Uh, and an uh, update from something that we talked about uh, about six months ago or so. It's the Salt Lake Comic Con San Diego Comic Con lawsuit. This past Thursday, a uh, uh, U.S. District Court Judge Anthony Battaglia uh, issued an injunction against Far Productions to stop them from using any version of the term Comic-Con. Uh, although they're still using Comic Convention, which is what Comic-Con is short for, but really he's just trying to stop them from using like Comic-Con and spelling it with K's or something weird like that. Um, uh, after Far Productions petitioned for the court to set aside the decision from last December uh, and start a brand new trial. So the judge also said that they had to pay almost $4 million in fees and court costs on top of the 20000 that they were uh, they were made to pay as the final verdict in December. Uh, so what went from pocket change now becomes a, an issue with money. $20,000 for a company like Far Productions is really nothing. But for a million, is starting to... They're, they're taking notice. Um, so that... I just... This whole thing is so ridiculous. But... That ridiculousness got a little bit more context this week, too, because I found out that what kind of started all of this, aside from the fact that San Diego just wants to be the only Comic-Con in the nation, apparently, because there are other lawsuits that were put on hold uh, waiting for the outcome of this specific one, but they have sued other Comic-Cons so far, but... Uh, the, the the kind of genesis of, of this specific Salt Lake versus San Diego issue was because their first year in existence, uh, or it might have been the second year, I, th I think their first year was 2013. So in 2014, Salt Lake Comic Con decided to poke the bear and they sent an Audi branded with the Salt Lake Comic Con logo and all, it's actually if you've been to Salt Lake Comic Con it sits out in front of one of the main entrances uh, the last three years that I've been so um, they sent that Audi to San Diego Comic Con to promote Salt Lake Comic Con uh, so that was that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. It would seem in that San Diego, that is when San Diego filed the lawsuit. That's also subsequently when San Diego started suing other Comic Cons for the name. Um, but still, I just <laughs> the colloquialism that is Comic Con. San Diego didn't come up with it. They weren't the first to use it. So how could they be the ones that are now suing everybody? We've talked about this in great detail. Uh, just just an update that we needed to talk about. And I will be not doing uh, a Week in Nerddom again next week. I know it's been kind of on and off, but there's been other things. I'm still posting content, you guys. Still some really decently nerdy content, too, if you're into photography and such. So, yeah, I... That it needs to be known. Uh, we will be in Salt Lake for Salt Lake Comic Con. 
assuming everything goes as planned, there is the off chance that I won't be able to go out. But right now, that is, seems to be about a 20% chance. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. San Salt Lake Comic Con, a.k.a. Fanex Salt Lake Comic Convention is what they're calling it now, which is really a mouthful. So Salt Lake Comic Con, there you go. Uh, yeah, moving on to the next thing, which is Brian Michael Bendis is in the news for a, uh, 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 let's just, let's just talk about it and we'll get through it. Okay. So action comics, number 1002, that's right. 1002, uh, came out last week. Uh, and there has been very bad reaction to it because in a scene where the primary antagonist, AKA the villain <laughs> is talking with one of his henchmen. He uses the word autistic in a derogatory way, uh, as an epithet even. And mothers all over the world or all over the country, at least got up in arms and and other ableist nonsense pushing uh, regressive so many things can't speak words so because there was such a backlash over what a villain said you know the guy who's supposed to do bad things People don't care when a villain blows up a bank or kills somebody because that is what villains do. But when a villain uses a bad word, a villain uses a bad word, heaven forbid, the entire freaking country goes crazy. So Brian Michael Bendis has since apologized, first wrong move, and has subsequently made sure or has made sure that subsequent ish, uh, printings of the story that occurs in action comics number 1002 that 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 word is omitted uh, I don't know if it's going to be replaced with just symbols just uh, dingbat symbols or if they're going to substitute it for another word that was unclear but he said that he was in contact with the publisher and, the, and to, to make sure that going forward in so like in the trade printing of the book that that word will not be in there because the villain can't say bad words. The villain can't call somebody a name. The vil that's what villains do. <laughs> I don't understand this. Oh, oh, my head hurts. Oh, my head hurts. And we're moving on. Next up is uh, concerning the DC Universe Act. My head still hurts, I'm sorry. My head still hurts. Uh, the DC Universe app just announced that they're going to have a daily streaming show called DC Daily on the app. And the first episode is going to uh, stream on August 29th, starting at 4.30, ending at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and will be hosted by Kevin Smith. Now, Kevin Smith is not going to be the host for DC Daily, Except for maybe occasionally, because their plan is that they're going to have uh, guest hosts every few episodes. So it's it, or even every episode. It's every episode potentially is going to be hosted by a different person. They're all going to be familiar faces to the DC family. Um, I feel like that's pretty cool. This also is set to replace all of the information that you get from the DC All Access app. They are going to stop support for DC All Access once the DC Daily show starts. Uh, the first episode, I don't know if subsequent episodes, but at the very least, the first episode is going to be uh, not just broadcast on DC Daily or on the DC Universe app, but also on their Twitch and YouTube and Facebook pages as well. So hopefully it'll be good. I mean, Kevin Smith has been kind of hinting at things recently that he's got a bunch of irons in the fire. I would imagine this was one of them, kind of, because he's only technically only hosting the first episode. Though down the road, there's nothing that says he can't oh uh, he can't host future episodes. Just he's not going to be the regular host. There's not going to be a regular host. And now we're talking in circles, so we're moving on. Uh, 
these last two bits that we're talking about are actually comic books. Batman number 53, Tom King's latest issue, uh, just came out and bring and is, is a trial that kind of brings up the question of Bruce Wayne slash Batman's religious beliefs. A lot of fans are saying that this issue illustrates that Bruce Wayne and or Batman are in fact atheist because there's a line in which uh, basically the entire issue is a monologue. He's just addressing the court. Uh, but there's a line in which he's talking about when he lost his faith the first time and they're saying, see, see, right there, see? That means he's an atheist. Uh, though Tom King, who wrote the book, says, you know, I don't think that's what that means. Um, because also saying that the first time he lost his faith implies that he then gained it back in order to potentially lose it a second and or third and or whatever amount of times he has gained and or lost it. So the struggle with belief does not necessarily denote the lack of belief. Um, that's just, that's just, that is a great conversation that we need to have down in the comments. Uh, does Batman become more or less effective if he has or doesn't have a, f a belief in a uh, a super in a in a greater power? Uh, does does he, if if he is an atheist, does he then become more effective, more uh, uh, identifiable? Uh, is it, or does his belief make him that way? Let's have that conversation. I would really love to hear what you guys have to th have to say about that. I personally feel like there's no way that Bruce Wayne is not re is not at least passively religious or spiritual, as some would call it, uh, because he's he's doing what he believes is right because of the death of his parents which to me implies that he believes his parents were doing something great and that exalted them to a point of, of a, a good afterlife. And he wants to also avenge their memory and do more good things so that he can then see them in that good afterlife. So that I, that's just always how I've kind of read Batman. I felt like most other people did as well, though it seems I'm not in the majority necessarily. So again, let's have that conversation down low. Uh, next and last is Hit Girl. Uh, we are returning back to Kevin Smith. Uh, it was announced on his podcast, uh, and then it got picked up by a couple other different places. He, he said on Fat Man on Batman that uh, the, he is going to be writing, or has written rather, a four-issue four arc uh, for the new Hit Girl series that is going currently. Right now is the end of the second part. It's a four-part story. Each part is uh, subsequently also broken down into four smaller parts, and each four-part arc is written by a different author. Kevin Smith has the fourth um so the artist that's going to be doing this with him is the artist that did the dc superhero girls uh pernil orum orum uh she's like scandinavian of some sort and so there's an umlaut over the o so i don't know how to, i even heard her pronounce it on the podcast can't remember how she did it uh, but it's going to be titled hit girl golden rage of hollywood uh the his issues start with issue number 13, um, and they are going to be out in j starting in January of 20 2019. Like I said, we just ended the arc number two, so arc number three is going to be in on shelves in October. Um, really interesting to see what happens here. Mark Miller, the origin, the origin, the originator. Words, uh, the originator of the character, Mark Miller. Uh, has come out and said some things that Kevin Smith doesn't necessarily see as being an accurate description of what he wrote, but still it's his characters and Smith is super excited to be playing in the sandbox, as he put it. Uh, and I'm really interested to see what he does with it because before he's been stuck in uh, the big two box, he hasn't really been able to go too crazy because he's playing with established characters. 
Hit Girl technically is an established character, but an established, almost feral character because she's kind. He, he put it, it, Smith put it the best. She's the pint sized Punisher. She, there's a lot of crazy that can go. And, but from his description, again, on Fat Man on Batman, he's, he referenced a lot of blood and he wants to see how Pernil draws uh, such a, um, a great amount of blood. So. I, that, that's just really cool. I'm, I, I haven't been reading the series, uh, but I feel like this is going to be one that's definitely worth a pickup. Even if you just pick up the trade, pick it up because it's uh, it, it's a really unique and good character. And, and we're ending on that note. So thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss this week in comic books? What should we talk about next week in comic books? Let me know in the comments down below. If though you would rather go deeper into this conversation with me, then jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can find the blog, you can find the social media links, everything is on generallynerdy.net. Or if you want to support the channel a little more directly, there is a Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. That is the place to support, uh, and you get a lot more content if you go over to the Patreon. So check it out, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. If you are brand new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind in your nerd news, you want to catch up? Click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, always, always remember, guys, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>